forward with the second theme of class 12th history and this talks about kings farmers towns and early states and economies so if we talk about the 600 bc this was the period where paddy transplantation started then came the magad the invasion of alexander the accession for of chandragupta maurya followed by the tenure of ashoka and the end of mauryan empire this is the period where we would talk about the ashokan rock edicts the major inscriptions and then came the smaller states in the uh, north as well as the south so in the south was the regions of chola sheras and pandyas satvanas in the deccan and then we had kushans kanishk as one of the major rulers considered as a divine ruler uh, during the kushan period and then we start with the beginning of the gupta period so this was a tenure of the shaka period where we transited from the bc to the ad and then the gupta period the major rulers during that time samudra gupta chandra gupta too uh, then there was finally the arab con uh, conquered uh, conquering the region of sindh so this was the time where agricultural settlements started in india now in the north deccan the regions of karnataka agriculture became a major activity pastoralism was seen in the region of deccan but there were new methods which were elaborated stone structures which were known as megaliths were started and these were giant structures built or carved out of single rocks iron tools iron weapons were used and even agriculture required use of uh, plowwares so plowwares in the semi arid areas whole agriculture in the regions of uh, terrain the hilly area was seen now princep discovered two scripts brahmi and kharoshti and this was the time uh, he was an officer from east india company and is believed to have uh, the most important discoveries so the king was known as piyadasi that means pleasant to behold that was the translation and this piyadasi was a code word was which was used for ashoka during that time now uh, the letter a itself had different ways of being written during the 250th bc it was written in this fashion and during the 5th, 500 ad it was written in this fashion so devanagari was the translation of the brahmi script which was seen now uh, what we understand was during the various periods alexander kunmingam published a series of ashokan inscription kunmingam was the first uh, director general of archaeological survey of india as we have already studied in our first theme and then there was issuance of epigraphy scripts the epigraphy carnatica which was the journal of south and then was epigraphica indica uh, and then dc sarkar published indian epigraphy and indian epigraphical glossary so that time was a period where janpats came into existence now janpat was the idea where it was the land of jan the foot where the foot of the people of the common man the tribe the clan head and this was a common word which was used both in prakrit and sanskrit sanskrit was the la uh, language of the brahmins during that time prakrit being the language understood by the common man so the earliest states were known as mahajanpads now during the 6th century these kuru panjal vajji avanti matasya chedi vats malla um, magad ang vanj Uh, those were some of the major mahajanpats as we can see kamboj gandhar were another and at that time use of iron use of coins and jainism and spread of jainism and buddhism was seen so uh, both mahavir and buddha belong to the gand now these gand were the places which were ruled by the kings now during this time at janpats it was not just the kings but along with kings the other major members of the sang were also ruling the party and together they were called as ganas so vajji sang was where the rajas actually controlled the resources of the land collectively now each mahajanpad had a capital city this capital city was fortified and it was being maintained by the army and the bureaucracy which was required uh, for Uh, let's say magad was one of the major uh, centers we would understand in the next slide as we proceed so uh, during this time 
all the janpats had um, started writing in sanskrit so their sanskrit text was known as dharma sutra and these were laid down as the norms for the rulers who uh, which the set of those norms were to be ex- Uh, followed by the kshatriyas and this was also the time where rulers advised the kshatriyas uh, and the uh, people to collect taxes from the peasants the laborers and the artisans so some of the states maintained their regular army their regular bureaucracies the other did not maintain them and requiring on the tax collection basis they had a military that they Uh, procured so magad as we said is one of the most powerful between the 4th to the 6th century and this was a time where tools weapons were developed in magad now uh, from the magad some of the important kings were bimbisara ajaj shatru uh, mahapadmananda uh, the capital was known as rajagha rajagha was later called as rajgir now rajgir in the present day bihar was the original capital of magad later the capital was shifted to pataliputra pataliputra was another capital and this was located uh, or called as the present day patna so the present day patna is actually the pataliputra the new capital of magad now this was important pataliputra was important because it was built on the river route of ganga and therefore was an important center of trade now during the mauryan empire who founded it was chandragupta maurya however during his time it was in the north regions mainly of afghanistan baluchistan during the time of ashoka it had its expanse to the south in the region of kaling after the kaling war where uh, ashoka actually adopted buddhism and was sorrowful about the penance of the war that had happened so kaling in the regions of coastal odisha was the extension during the time of ashokan uh, period now most ashokan inscriptions were written in prakrit and these were mainly in the northwest part of indian continent however uh, in the major part of the indian continent in the northwest it was mainly in the regions of uh, languages of greek and aramaic now for prakrit what was the script for prakrit brahmi was the script and for aramaic what was the script uh, kharoshthi was the script now greek and aramaic was the basic uh, language which was used in the northwest now megasthenes was one of the greek ambassadors to the court of chandragupta maurya and he talked about the expanse and later on it was through the uh, arthashastra of kautilya or chanakya we get to know more about the chandragupta period the mauryan period lasted for nearly 150 years and by the second century we had new chiefdoms and new kings which started to establish uh, this mauryan empire had an army of nearly 6 lakh soldiers okay uh, it is believed that there was 30000 cavalry 9000 elephants and some of the historians believe that these rego- records which were written by megasthenes are actually exaggerated Ashokan edicts are again important the rock edicts could be seen across india so there are the those one marked the red triangles are the major ones and the squares are the minor ones and then we have pillar inscriptions which are measured put in the dots now ashoka was the first ruler who inscribed the messages through these pillars and was having an idea to provide this message to the common people and this was called as the dham dharma or the dham so he created a series of people who were known as dharma mahamatas and they were the people who were there to spread the message of dharma the idea under him was that the slaves should be treated with kindness uh, those who uh, are elderly must be respected there should be a trait of generosity that must be witnessed with an individual and an individual's traditions and acknowledgement to one's tradition is extremely important so there were five major political centers during that time pataliputra was one such center similarly ujjaini was center takshila was center tosali and swarnagiri in the south swarnagiri was the center where uh, the excavations for gold was done so swarnagiri 
as the name suggests swarn means gold this was the place where in karnataka gold mining was done and megasthen said that there was a committee with six sub committees which were there so one committee looked after navy there was another committee which managed the transport uh, the one which managed the transport talked about the bullock bullock carts bringing in the foods fodder for animals recruiting the servants the third was the foot army or the foot soldiers the fourth were the horses the fifth were the chariots and the sixth were the elephants so there were six committees that were present during this time of ashoka and these committees were written under the text written by megasthenes also as i said ashoka was considered as one of the most powerful and industrious leader of that time and uh, he was the one who was later uh, considered as one of the nationalist leader even till the 12th century now during this time in the south new king uh, kingdoms started to come up so chola steras pandyas together called as the tamil tamilakkam that is the region of tamil country the present day tamil nadu andhra pradesh and kerala so these three areas together were called as tamil kam and chola steras pandyas together were the region considered to be here the next is the kushan kings were very very powerful so these tamil sangam actually described the chiefs and the way in which they acquired and distributed the resources so many kings during the satvanas which were in the deccan period uh, in the western and the central part of india and similarly the shakas who were actually the cent- uh, the people of central asia in origin came to the northwest and the west parts of india uh, how they derived revenues from long trades with so the tamil people derived the revenues from satvanas and shakas and how that was made possible uh, was again an interesting concept now during the kushan period kanishk was one of the major rulers now according to ncert it is believed that the kanishk was one during who, whose time uh, the gold coins were introduced however cadifus is considered as the first kushan ruler during whose time uh, gold coins were introduced so there are uh, pros and cons and controversies regarding who was the first but this was a, a brief idea about the content now again uh, deities were worshiped during the kushan period so during the kushan period the king was considered at a divine position so ganesh himself was considered as one of the rulers who was at a divine position and it was at that time that they were considered as devaputra devaputra means son of god now this terminology and idea came from the chinese rulers who called them son of heaven so that was the idea which was derived from the chinese ruler and they were called as devaputra or son of the god so on most of the coins on the obverse and the reverse side on one side there was the the figure of kanishk on the other side was the figure of god uh, similarly we had a uh, huge far and wide places where statues of kanishk were seen for example in the math mathura in uttar pradesh to the parts in afghanistan kanishk statues have been seen uh, then came the guptas now guptas during the 4th century dependent on samant samant were the people who maintained the local resources and the control over the local land they also provided homage and support to the military for the rulers so gupta period developed during this time and one of the alabad pillar inscriptions which is known as prayag prahasti uh, prayag prahasti uh, is composed in sanskrit by hari sen uh, and uh, like this pillar had a very important a uh, significance because uh, samudra gupta was considered as most powerful ruler of that time and this uh, uh, alahabad pillar is in the glory of samudra gupta talking about his uh, divine and uh, greatness now historians consider this as factual however for others who are really interested into the text this was considered as a uh, version of poetry the next is the popular perception of the kings now sometimes it so happens that inscriptions are not able to answer each and every question so ordinary people thoughts are not actually addressed in the text now this was one of the reasons that jatakas and uh, uh panchatantra were written so jatakas were uh, the tales which were written in pali and these were mainly depicting the story now there was one story of gand 
Tindu Jatak. Now, Ganda Tindu Jatak was a story where there was the idea that the king was very wicked. He used to roam about in the region and see what his uh, common people in the village had the feelings about him. So they realize, he realized that the people were fed up with miseries and were not at all happy and finally people abandoned the village and left on to the forest area. So escaping into forest was one such idea which reflected the story of Jataka and the other talked about the growing demands of of the taxes that came to be adopted uh, which people adopted in the later phases the another interesting story is about the sudarshan lake now sudarshan lake had a rock inscription uh, a rock inscription had a story of sudarshan lake from gujarat now this was built by the shaka ruler rudradaman rudradaman was one of the rulers during whose time uh, there was a huge gush of uh, water from the lake and this lake uh, the embankments actually broke and this was during his time Rudradaman did not impose any of the taxes and by his own uh, money he built the complete structure again. The lake was later on again repaired uh, as has been mentioned under the Gupta dynasty. So there have been various developments that were mentioned. As we mentioned before, agriculture was a main state during this time. So in the semi-arid areas, iron plowshare was used. In the hilly terrains, hoe agriculture was used. Irrigation was another method. Now irrigation was done by wells, tanks and sometimes canals was another way. Now alluvial soil which was seen in the region of Ganga was one of the areas through which water had to come. And these um, structures were built to actually ensure that agriculture is at its best. Now, there was segmentation within the society. Within the society, there was a class of landless labors, agricultural labors, small peasants and large landholders. Now, these were called differently in the north as well as in the south. In the north, uh, they were called as large landholders or Gahapati. Now, these Gahapati had the complete uh, land which was designated to the smaller landholders or the smaller farmers and uh, these large landholders as well as the headmen the village headmen were responsible and most powerful figures in the village however in the sangam literature in the south the large landholders were known as Vela, uh, velalar the plowmen were known as uzhavars and the slaves were known as adimai so the names again for the landowners in the south was Velavar, for the Plo people it was called as Uzavar and for the slaves it was Admai. So these names in the Sangam literature and the northern uh, side as Gahapati were uh, the important texts that we have seen. In the next section of the same theme we would talk more about the development and how the inscriptions were there, how they were deciphered and what was the limitations to decipher these inscriptions. So stay tuned for a second part of this theme of NCRT class 12th and in the meanwhile you do have important useful links in the description. Stay tuned.